been joined by driver of the number 16 Lily Diabetes American Diabetes Association Ford for the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Ryan Reed, and also Jim Perkins, who's the director of Wellmont Diabetes Treatment Centers. And Ryan, we'll start with you. Talk a little bit about your relationship this weekend with Wellmont and um, just the connection with, you know, obviously your diabetes diagnosis and, and, and kind of what Wellmont's doing, and then we'll turn to Jim to kind of add as well um, how they're making diabetes known um, and treatment options known here in the Tri-Cities area. Yeah, well, um, like you said, I, I was diagnosed with diabetes uh, uh, over five years ago, so um, when I was first diagnosed, they told me I'd never be in a race car again, so obviously I know how, how tough this disease is and how devastating it can be. Uh, but along with that, you know, I feel like, you know, through the, especially through my relationship with Lily Diabetes and American Diabetes Association, you know, I've definitely seen um, how, how much you can really do whatever you want. And, uh, you know, if you work with your doctor and, uh, you know, like I said, look at treatment options and really uh, just go out there and, and don't let diabetes hold you back, but also work with your doctor, uh, then you can go out and chase your dreams. And for me, it's driving a race car. For anybody else, it, it's uh, main probably is something different. But, you know, the, my relationship with Wellmont has been awesome, and I really appreciate everything they're doing to uh, raise awareness for diabetes. And the Wellmont Diabetes Alert sticker is just uh, another way to uh, to kind of show and expand on, on that. And uh, just really appreciative, like I said, of everything that they do and everything they continue to do. And just really proud to be uh, a small part of that and excited to have the Diabetes Alert sticker on the race car this weekend. It's something we've done for the last few years and really, really excited about uh, doing it again. And Jim, if you can just talk a little bit about um, the treatment options in the Tri-Cities area and also um, the efforts um, that you are working on with children to have them tested for diabetes as well. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Um, I moved to this area from Texas back in 1992. And back in the 80s and 90s, Austin, Texas was not really a mecca for NASCAR racing. They were more a mecca for a barbecue and uh, blues music. And when I moved here, I, I noticed about half the cars riding around the streets had numbers on them, and I had no idea what those numbers meant. And being in the world and the hub of NASCAR, I quickly found out that 24 was Jeff Gordon, now it's Chase Elliott, and 3 was Dale Earnhardt. Now I know that number 16 is Ryan Reed. And the pride that people have putting those numbers on the car uh, just goes without saying. But there is a number that I know Ryan is not very proud of, and that is number four. Tennessee ranks number four in the country on the prevalence of type 2 diabetes, and I'm betting Ryan isn't proud of number five either. That's where Sullivan County, where we are right now, ranks in the state of Tennessee on type 2 diabetes. And, and, and as I talk about numbers, um, the numbers, uh, the Know Your Number campaign that one of the local radio stations is doing, it's talking about Know Your NASCAR Drivers Numbers, and that's great for NASCAR. But being in the world of diabetes, when you say know your numbers, we want you to understand that knowing your numbers means knowing what an A1C is, knowing what that number level is, knowing what your blood glucose number is. And by knowing that, people can get early diagnosis of diabetes and get education, which is what we do at Wellmont in the diabetes treatment centers. And it's gone from adults down to kids. And Ryan, I don't know how well you're aware of all this, but we're seeing kids in the seventh and eighth grade that have type 2 diabetes. And we've developed a program to identify these children, to get treatment, so they can live a very full, happy life, just like you're doing. Uh, Ryan's a great, great proponent of diabetes awareness. And because of that, he, this year, as he said, is, is driving with the Diabetes Alert Sticker. It's a, a tool that we developed here several years ago, and it goes in the window of a car for individuals that have type 2 diabetes. So if they're pulled over for a, a traffic mishap or there is an accident, the law enforcement can quickly identify and let EMS know that they have diabetes and this may save a life. So I just want to say, number one, we're proud to be the, the exclusive wellness provider for Bristol Motor Speedway and we're also proud to be associated with Ryan Reed and what all he does to support diabetes. We've also been joined by Julie Williams, who's the communications manager for Lily Diabetes. And Julie, talk about just programs like um, what Jim's been talking about and how, you know, that just helps grow the platform that you have every weekend when you go into a race market, um, you know, to tell the diabetes story and also the treatment options and testing that's out there. 
That's right. Thank you. And apologies for being late. You'd think being from Indianapolis and Lily that I would know how to navigate a track and the credentialing offices, but we did get we stymied a little bit. So anyway, we're here and we're just thrilled to be back in Bristol. This is the third year that we've been here and the second year that Ryan has um, raced with the diabetes sticker on his car. And I think it's um, so important that we continue to go from track to track to track to tell this story because diabetes is um, a, an epidemic in the United States and actually, unfortunately, around the world as well. And so the more people that we can be, make more aware of the fact that they may have diabetes, if they have it in their family, and if they have it themselves, to take the best care of themselves that they possibly can and to see their doctor and uh, talk to their friends and family about it. It's not um, a stigma. It is a, a disease that people have, but it, um, if taken care of properly, it can be very well managed. As Ryan is a, a perfect testimony to that, that diabetes does not have to stand in your way of you know, seeing your grandkids get married or to run a race in, at Bristol. <laughs> you, can, you can still live a very healthy and long life with diabetes if you manage it properly. And that's what we try to say at Lilly Diabetes is that um, we have programs and uh, materials that are downloadable off of our website, uh, lilydiabetes.com forward slash drive, that talks about the drive program, has more information about Ryan, um, and also some very helpful tools with carb counting guides and meal planning guides and things that you should say to your doctor or ask your doctor about to make sure that your diabetes is well managed so that you, you can um, either run a race or see people get married or just live your life. All right, and Ryan, before we turn it over for a Q&A for everyone here at the front, um, talk a little bit about this weekend, the exciting race tomorrow with the new Dash for Cash format, the heats in the main. Just talk a little bit about, you know, what that brings to this weekend, but also kind of, um, you know, how, how you're going to approach um, tomorrow. Um, well, yeah, first of all, just, uh, you know, going to the heat race uh, format this weekend and having the Dash for Cash, and we've had Dash for Cash for a few years, but obviously throwing in the heat race and, uh, how you qualify for the dash for cash out of the heat races. Uh, it's really exciting, and, and it's definitely going to be a huge change uh, from what we've had in the past. So I'm really excited for that. You know, I, I grew up uh, heat racing, you know, racing late models out in California. So I haven't run a heat race in probably, you know, four or five years. So really excited to um, kind of get back to that, get back to the roots a little bit. And I think uh, all the fans are as well, and I'm sure all the media is as well. Uh, so it should add for a lot of excitement. Um, you know, Bristol's a tough track regardless, and then you throw in heat races and give us one more opportunity to go up there and tear up the car before uh, before the end of the race is uh, going to be going to be challenging. I know uh, we talked a lot about it this week, and um, it's really interesting because you know obviously you want to be able to um, start the start the main event with a clean race car, but then also too if you're in a position to qualify for the Dash for Cash, uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to get aggressive and, and do that. And then if you win two of these Dash for Cashes and you're locked in the chase, so that puts another element in there that that really adds a lot of pressure and adds some uh pressure to go out there and, and get it done um but just really excited and then uh you know i feel like bristol is a place that uh, i've struggled out in the past so definitely want to go in here and, and work really hard and uh, talk to uh chris busher a lot this week uh, ricky stenhouse all my teammates trying to trying to learn from them to kind of uh, accelerate that process and come out here and unload here in a few hours for practice and and uh have some speed so uh, looking forward to getting this weekend going, um, and then uh, looking forward to getting in the dash for cash tomorrow, hopefully, and um, hopefully winning 100 grand. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions for Jim, Ryan, or Julie. If you have one, please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. Okay, we'll go to Jeff, and then Doug, and then Jeff. Uh, Jeff Birchville, John C. Press. This is for Jim. Being a local company like this, what does it mean to be affiliated with Bristol Motor Speedway and with a major team like Roush Fenway Racing? Well, uh, Wellmont has been the exclusive medical provider for Bristol Motor Speedway and Dragway for over 10 years. So we've had a good affiliation with NASCAR, but when we heard about Ryan and Lily and Roush Fenway's willingness to do a local thing like we're doing with the Diabetes Alert sticker, it just thrilled us. And the sticker I didn't mention earlier, but we started it here in the Tri-Cities, and it is now across the state. Uh, it's in Knoxville. It's all the way to Memphis. So being able to get national exposure on this, letting people know about diabetes, I can't say enough in how appreciative we are of, of Roush Fenway and Ryan for that opportunity. All right, Doug, go ahead. Mark, I'm sorry. 
right. Totally. Sorry about that. No problem. Mark uh, Garrell, PRN. I guess this question is for all three of you. What What is the biggest hurdle to overcome uh, to compete uh, with this type of disease? What are What is the you know What are the things, the key things that you have to key in on, and what do you tell people to key in on so they can compete, or you know just go through a high level of exertion? You guys want me to? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, obviously there's, you know, whether you're driving a race car or not, there's a lot of things you have to manage with diabetes. And I would say that all those things, uh, it's very similar things, whether you, you know, I'm strapping into a race car or just, um, you know, having a Sunday off, you know, it's, uh, checking your blood sugar, it's, uh, monitoring it continuously. It's, um, you know, taking insulin, taking, uh, multiple insulin shots a day. So those are all things that I, that play into race day, but, uh, it's all different on race day. Obviously, uh, when you're talking about strapping in a race car for two hours, you're not going to have the opportunity to, you know, prick your finger and put blood on a test strip and see what your blood sugar is. Uh, you're not going to have uh, an opportunity to, um, you know, take an insulin shot. Oh, I do, but it's, you know, through a pit stop, having a pit crew member trained to give me an insulin injection during a pit stop, which is a safety net, not something we plan on having to do. But really, you know, I think the, the major thing is, is just work, I work with my doctor a lot and still do. Um, and that's no different than managing your diabetes any you know, on any other day. Um, you know, I, my doctor's a lot smarter than I am, and I, I recognize that, and I uh, listen to what she has to say and try and practice that. You know, obviously, um, you're the one taking the diabetes home with you. You're the one who has to manage it day in and day out, but your doctor uh, can really make a difference. And, you know, if you have a good relationship with your doctor like I do, then it makes it a lot easier, you know. And I know I talk to her all the time, uh, always asking her questions, and it's made a huge difference. Um, you know, even over the last couple of years, you know, I've been racing for, uh, you know, five years now with diabetes and uh still to this day you know i mean i don't feel like i i communicate with her any less you know it's just uh it's always changing it's always developing and um my doctor's always coming up with something new to try and make my life a little easier which i'm appreciative of all right we'll go to jeff and our final question from stan go ahead jeff jeff clark from usa today ryan with this new uh chase format do you find yourself looking at the point standings more often than you did last year or is there anything different in your week-to-week -week approach when you come to the track? Uh, just when it shows up in my notifications on Twitter, man. Uh, now, I mean, it, it's really early. Um, obviously, I think that definitely as I think you get closer to, you're going to pay a lot more attention to it, especially if you're on the bubble getting close to the chase. You know, I mean, I think that um, watching over the, you know, especially in the Cup Series over the last few years, you know, you, you definitely want the, – the goal is to get locked in the chase. And once you're locked in the chase – it's going to obviously change your approach a lot, and it's kind of a reset, and then you're going to have the opportunity to uh, hopefully make it down into Homestead and, and compete in that uh, final race for championship. But right now, you know, I mean, I think that it is different in the Cup Series in the way that you have a lot of Sprint Cup uh, Sprint Cup rate drivers, you know, week in and week out in the, in the Xfinity Series, which makes it really tough to win. Um, so, you know, not that... Not that you've ever entered a race feeling like you can't win, but you know you also know that how tough it is to win, so you also know how how important those points are going to be. So um, definitely, you know, it hasn't eliminated points racing at all. Um, you know, you definitely would need to make sure that you don't have those catastrophic days because those are the days that knock you outside the top twelve, and then you're in trouble come come chase time. So uh, definitely focused on you know on our worst days, still salvaging points, still you know I mean if we you know have a bad pit stop, have a tire get something goes wrong. Um, or if I just, you know, screw up and tear up the race car, then, you know, we, we need to make sure that we do the best we can on those days to not have it be, um, you know, a huge points loss. So that way, uh, you know, whether we win or we don't win, you know, we have enough points to lock ourselves into the chase. All right, we'll take our final question from Stan. Go ahead. Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight.com. Ryan, uh, a lot of people don't understand the issues daily of, diabetes and and yours is obviously hourly in a sense but they don't understand a1d that 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 number that they only check every three months or something how is your a1d number yeah it's a1c not to a1c i'm there sorry my apologies one letter away um but it's uh you know, A1C is is kind of, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people with diabetes kind of feel like it's your report card, you know. Uh, when you go see your doctor, they check your A1C, and, you know, it's not something that you can, you know, I guess, suppose you can check it yourself, but, you know, most people just wait till they go see their doctor, and, you, you know, you, you feel like, man, I had a really good three months to manage my diabetes well, and that's, like I said, almost your report card in a sense, um, you know, but it's, um, it's something that kind of can put a lot of pressure on you, but at the same time can be really rewarding uh, and know that you're, and I know for me, I look a lot at my A1C, and uh, me and my doctor feel really comfortable where my A1C is at, and um, it's just... 
the, the tighter you manage your diabetes, the better management you have. Usually, nine times out of ten, uh, the better your A1C is going to be. Um, and for people with diabetes, that usually means a lower number. So um, A1C is just, a, like I said, it's about a three-month average of what your uh, blood sugar uh, has done over the last three months. And so... You know, it, uh, short of writing down your blood sugar, um, you know, every time you check and, and graphing it out, you know, that's the most efficient way to see what your kind of average is has been over the last three months. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's a lot of work managing your diabetes, and that's your, that's your benchmark. So, um, like I said, me and my doctor have felt really good over the last few years where my A1C has been at. And uh, a, my, during the off-season, it might go a little higher if I, you know, taking a little break, eating more pizza. But, um, you know, for the most part, you know, we, we feel good, you know, of uh, every quarterly checkup that I have with her. All right, Ryan, Jim, and Julie, thank you for your time today. Ryan, we wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thanks, guys. Um, Jim